Good evening, good afternoon, good night, and good morning. Thank you for tuning in to RETV News Break. I'm Tyron. And Nicole with your weekly RETV News Break. Every week, Ty and I bring you news, trends, and more with a positive spin. For our first story, here's what you need to know and what it means for your student loans. There's good news for student loan borrowers. President Joe Biden has canceled $6.2 billion of student loans. However, you may be wondering if you will qualify for the student loan forgiveness. While 100,000 student loan borrowers are expected to qualify for the student loan cancellation, it's important to understand who won't qualify for $6.2 billion of student loan forgiveness. Here are three types of student loan borrowers who won't get student loan forgiveness. Number one, if you're not pursuing student loan forgiveness, the $6.2 billion of student loan forgiveness is not automatic. You'll need to pursue student loan forgiveness. Specifically, this student loan cancellation only applies to the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Biden could deliver student loan cancellation and student loan payment pause, but more to come on that. This program is available to student loan borrowers who work full time for a qualified public service or nonprofit employer. You'll need to meet several requirements, including enrolling in an income driven repayment plan and making at least 120 monthly student loan payments. If you're not already enrolled, it's not too late to start. While you won't qualify for this $6.2 billion of student loan forgiveness, you can still qualify for total student loan forgiveness for your federal student loans. Contact your student loan servicer for details. Make sure to send an employer certification form to the U.S. Department of Education every year and whenever you change jobs. Number two will determine whether or not you are qualified for the forgiveness. You won't complete a complete waiver for student loan forgiveness. If you're currently pursuing student loan forgiveness, the easiest way to not qualify for student loan forgiveness is to forget to do this one thing. You must complete a limited waiver for student loan forgiveness. In October, Biden announced major changes to student loan forgiveness that will enable more student loan borrowers to get student loan cancellation. If any of your previous federal student loan payments weren't counted, this is your opportunity to get retroactive credit. For example, if you made a late student loan payment or partial student loan payment, this is your opportunity to get credit towards your 120 required monthly student loan payments. Similarly, if you made student loan payments while enrolled in the wrong student loan repayment plan, you can now count these student loan payments as well. However, you only have until October 31st of 2022 to complete the limited waiver. And number three, you have private student loans you won't qualify for any student loan forgiveness with private student loans. Unfortunately, private student loans are excluded from this $6.2 billion of student loan forgiveness. Similarly, this is true with most student loan forgiveness programs which focus on federal student loans only. If you have both private and federal student loans, however, your federal student loans still can qualify for student loan forgiveness. Next steps. It's important to understand who will and won't benefit from this student loan cancellation. The good news, Biden has canceled more than 15 billion of student loans, which is more student loan cancellation than any president in history. Your next step is to plan for the restart of federal student loan payments, which will begin after May 1st, 20 of 22. This means you should evaluate all your options for student loan repayment based on your unique financial situation. Wow. Um, great information. Mouthful, no, mouthful, <laughs> great I'm information. I'm really impassionate when it comes to opportunities for people to take advantage, especially when it comes to eliminating debt. And although it's a lot, and I think the federal government has intentionally made it, made, you know, a lot of red tape to mm -hmm. qualify. If you do qualify, meaning you work for um, a public sector or nonprofit, I think it's well worth doing the due diligence, following it, following the, the instructions to a T to get that debt paid off. Oh yeah, I definitely think it's worth it. But like you said, you just gave three examples of, of ways that you will not necessarily qualify. And none of the ways that you specifically mentioned seem to be that complicated, although I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure the process in itself is complicated. But you said that he's going through a period where he's getting ready to erase $6.2 mm -hmm. um of student loan debt. Right. One, that's a lot of debt. 
let's just start there. So but we, that's a subset of what he's already, already done. That's already. what I'm saying. That's, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So let's start there. That's a lot of uh, you know, six point two billion is a is a lot of money. Money that mm -hmm. most of us won't see in our lifetimes. Um, but so that I applaud him on definitely. But I hate the fact that there is so much red tape, as you mentioned, and or, or so many hoops um, to jump through in order to get your student loan, you know, yeah. uh, uh, removed or disqualified or however canceled. you want to cancel, however you want to put it. Um, but I, like you said, I encourage as many people as possible if you qualify uh, for whatever reason, you know, to go out there and see if you can get this stuff removed. Because we're only we're one of the very few countries that still has to pay for education. This is true. So um, that just sucks because <laughs> we have so much debt as it is as a nation, as a as a country, as a people, as a community, um, all of those things. So you know, yeah, if we can just go out there and find a way, find a way to get your. It, it'd be nice if they could just erase the debt altogether. That that would be dope. But I it give him would. credit for like you said, the fifteen. We say fifteen, billion. fifteen billion that he's already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I definitely give him credit, cause especially since, since that's more than what any other president has done to the, to, to to date. But you know what, with all the red tape, especially that number one where, you know, you have to pursue for student loan forgiveness, meaning register, right, mm -hmm. to start the process. But then a subset of that is you have to have met or have paid 120 yeah, that part. monthly <laughs> payments. I would love to see the stats on how many who do qualify actually meet have met that 120, you know, monthly payment. However, True. I don't see where they say you have to make it consecutive. Consecutive to 120. So maybe that's a loophole as well. I was about to say, but then you also mentioned if for whatever reason you made a partial, mm -hmm. that can count towards 120. Yeah. If it went to the wrong place, yeah. that can count towards 120. So I, you know, I see they're trying to give a little bit of leeway, mm -hmm. literally like maybe yeah. a little bit of leeway, <laughs> but um, 120 is a heck of a lot of payments. I mean, don't get me wrong. You got to do what you got to do. I understand that. Um, I'm pretty sure if you've made 120, you've probably said, hey, I might as well just go ahead and pay the rest of it off. But mm -hmm. you're like, let me save them dollars at the same time. So if I can True. qualify that for the student loan forgiveness, let me go ahead and qualify for the student loan forgiveness. Yeah, yeah I just, um, what was I going to say? It came and went, but... Um, I'm glad we paid off our student loans. Yeah, for sure. And I'm I'm really glad we did because had we not, we wouldn't qualify because we don't work for a public sector nor a nonprofit. Womp, womp, so womp. <laughs> so unfortunately, for those of us who favor. don't <laughs> exactly work for a nonprofit or a public sector job, then yeah, unfortunately, you don't qualify. Uh, but more power to you. Hopefully, some more things will come about. Um, you know, with the student loan forgiveness or student pa loan pauses or mm -hmm. all of the rest of the stuff that's happened. You know, over the past couple of years uh, since COVID has has started. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so get on it because May will be here before you know it. Exactly. And so it is May and October, really. Yeah. Truth be told. In our next story, the magic of Deion Sanders, a.k.a. Coach Prime, continues to shine at Jackson State University. The Tigers will be the first HBCU, historically black college and university, for those who didn't know that, to have a nationally televised spring football game. According to Jackson State University Athletics, the 2022 Jackson State University Spring Game will be televised live on Sunday, April 24th at 5 p.m. on ESPNU. The football game will be free and open to the public as the 2021 Southwestern Athletic Conference Football Championships will conclude the spring practice season at Mississippi Veteran Memorial Stadium. Meanwhile, tickets for the 2022 JSU football season are on sale Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Mississippi Veteran Memorial Stadium box, op box office. Tickets can also be bought online at Ticketmaster.com. After Coach Prime agreed to coach the Jackson State University football team, it became a family business. Shalomi Sanders and his daughter has, uh, his daughter, excuse me, Shalomi Sanders, his daughter, has committed to joining her father at Jackson State University. The Clarion Ledger reported um, attending the HBCU alongside her siblings, Shador and Shiloh. In his first year, Dion won the, won the FSC Coach of the Year after taking the football team to the Celebration Bowl. Although the team lost, it was the first time it made it to the championship. 
while Shador, his starting quarterback, was named FCS Football Freshman of the Year as he led Jackson State to its SWAC title since two, first SWAC title since 2007. His brother Shiloh, a junior this upcoming season, and a defensive back for the football team led the Tigers in interceptions. Nice. That is pretty dope for Coach Prime and the Jacksonville State University. Now, is this coach. his first season or second season? No. So this is his second season as coach, but you know, they had the whole COVID stuff. So, you know, there was some limited play and all that good stuff. But. I just applaud him for all that he's doing for Jackson State. Mm -hmm. I just, and I know he's trying to do more than just for Jackson State. Mm -hmm. But right now, I know a lot of the attention, a lot of the focus and stuff is going towards Jackson State because of who he is and his connections and all the things that he's bringing to Jackson, um, Jackson State. I just really hope and look forward to seeing what other coaches and other celebrities and other former players and so forth may have the opportunity to do at other HBCUs as well because there are other HBCUs who do also need the, the money, who need the notoriety, who need the visibility mm -hmm. of ESPNU or ESPN and so on and so forth um, that a lot of HBCUs are not getting. So definitely a shout out to those schools such as um, at Tennessee, uh, Tennessee State uh, where I can't remember his name right now. Taj's husband from SWV. Uh, Eddie George. Yeah, there you go. Eddie George mm -hmm. is uh, head coach over there. Nice. Um, you also have a brand new head coach down in Gramlin. Uh, I think it's Hugh Jackson, former NFL coach. Um, okay. I know there's a few other uh, assistant coaches at FAMU and a bunch of other HBCUs. So I, I really look forward to seeing what they actually do to the athletic programs at these HBCUs, getting them their money, getting them their just due, getting them their recognitions and so forth. Um, but definitely a good shout out to uh, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders over there at Jackson State for what he's doing and turning around that program as a whole, as well as getting, you know, that school. Um, it's it's just due. Um, like you said, they won the Celebration celebration Bowl last year. Oh, no, excuse me. They went to the Celebration Bowl, but didn't actually win uh, last year. I think they played South Carolina State, and they lost to South Carolina State down in Atlanta okay. um, for the Celebration Bowl. Uh, so that's pretty dope. I'm glad to see, you know, like you said, you know, the great work that they're doing. And hopefully it will be a domino effect, mm -hmm. you know, for other HBCUs. And then beyond that, getting these athletes... Um, the visibility to be able to, you know, be scouted for the NFL. And I, that's know. his biggest, I think that's one of his biggest things that he, that he did, especially this year, um, was trying to create a, a scouting combine is what they call it. Um, in sports, okay. so that way, specifically for HBCUs, because he realized that they were not they were not getting the invites to mm -hmm. the predominantly uh, the, to the to the major uh, combine where there mm -hmm. are the pre predominantly white schools who get invited, and you know players from the predominantly white schools, both black and white, get invited there, mm -hmm. but the HBCUs are not getting the recognition where there are predominantly African American players or black players, or and, and you know there are other players that you know play at HBCU schools as well, but he he created a combine specifically for HBCUs to be able to get the recognition and have NFL scouts and teams to come, you know, take a look, you know, and give them just as much of a shot as if they went to a power, you know, power that's division awesome. one school. So I think that's pretty dope. That's awesome. Awesome. For our next story, in her Instagram bio, Natalie Trevon lists the Bible verse Romans 8, 28 through 29, which can be interpreted as through God's purpose, all things are possible. This is a true testament to her story. When Trevon lost her vision at the age of 18, her life was upended. Although she was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis at a one-year-old, nothing could have compared, prepared her to be forced to view the world in a different way, literally. Always a performer, in high school she was a cheerleader, co-captain of her dance team, a member of the show choir. After graduating, she had plans to enter into public relations, a highly relational industry, to help curate brands. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out as planned. Honestly, when I was in high school, I fell in love with being a PR person or image consultant, she shared with Essence. After watching the television show The Game and seeing what Dion did with Derwin, I thought that's what I wanted to do. But at that time, I was slowly losing my eyesight and it and at 18, I lost it completely and went into university right after that, which was very tough. 
it was a very hard transition from not walking assisted at all to having to walk with the cane at all times. Even learning how to use the screen reader blind people use on their computers. It was all really tough, she said. She attended Cal Poly Pomona, a polytech school in Pomona, California, ranked one of the best public universities in the region, which posed an even bigger issue. And I quote, it's huge and there were so many students there that didn't have experience being around a blind person their age. It was just really tough to make that transition, end quote. Despite the challenges, she forged on and received her degree in public relations and advertising in 2013 and had her sights set on plunging headfirst into the industry right away. It didn't quite work out that way. She said it was nearly impossible for her to land a one day to land a job. One day it just hit it just hit her. I could graduate in four years like everyone else, have a great GPA, be competent, have internship experience, and still society looks at me like you can't do the work because you have a disability. And not only that, I'm a black woman, she shared. As she always been in, in She's always been interested in fashion. Travon said she decided to use her LinkedIn profile as a launching pad to reach out to people in the industry for opportunities. Soon after, she struck gold. Through her connections on the platform, she's now able to design her first designer dress that will premiere later this month at the first Meta Fashion Week along with some high profile names like Tommy Hilfiger, Levi, and more. Quote, it's an NFT wedding dress, which is so advanced, but I'm incredibly honored and excited, she shared. I would never have been able to do it without LinkedIn. She said the opportunity is so much bigger than her. She's building a platform to show the world that she's much more than her disability in her field that she's earned her degree in. Wow, that's pretty dope. Talk about perseverance. Yeah. <laughs> I Definitely. should not be complaining. <laughs> yeah, for for you to go from you know having all these plans, um, graduating high school, to you know realizing that you're losing your sight, and I'm pretty sure that was a shock amongst itself. Yeah. Um, and then literally, it, it would apparently seem to be overnight. You just go completely blind, yeah. um, but still forge ahead to you know pursue you know her dreams while altered some, mm -hmm. but still you know forge ahead to to you know see her dream come true and be at a point where she's able to design dress like literally think about that like a blind person designing you know outfits and dresses and so forth and it's and a it pretty cool futuristic wedding dress that you know now is in one of the mainstream platforms the metaverse yeah yeah and so to go from you know wanting to do public relations um which is you know i guess it's still a little bit you know you're doing branding and you're doing you know some you know to to being a a, a designer mm -hmm. <laughs> and having an nft uh, which i again you know i, I will have to look at the pictures see what that looks like but the nft wedding dress yeah. i've heard of all types of wedding dresses but i've never heard of an nft wedding dress so that's pretty so dope this will be the first she's a trendsetter i love it yeah. So congratulations, Natalie. Job well done. <laughs> Definitely. In our final story, there was a great moment that happened the other night at the uh, Academy Awards, better known as the Oscars. But because it happened directly after a shopping, shocking moment, which we all know about, it's not getting all the flowers in love it should. <sighs> I'm tired of talking about this whole Will Smith, Chris Rock thing, but we're not. So here we go. Good. So <laughs> for this, we are fully celebrating the fact that Summer of Soul, the feature documentary about the 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival directed by The Roots co-founder and musical impression, impression, uh, impresario, impresario, excuse me, Questlove, won a much deserved Oscar. From Sly and the Family Stone to Fifth Dimension, Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Edwin Hawkins singers, the Staple singers, Mongo Santa Maria, David Ruffin, Mahalia Jackson, Mavis Staples, and other, the music on display and the stories behind the event are close to, if not completely, mind blowing. <laughs> Thank you again, Questlove, and all the artists involved that helped bring the Summer of Soul into our lives for all seasons. 
you are truly, you all truly made and resurrected important cultural history. I love that documentary. That was pretty dope um, to, to, to see. It came out, I think, HBO Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it recognized that in the story, but yeah, we, we saw it on H HBO Max. HBO mm -hmm. Plus, Max, they all one got so one of them, I don't know. But it was pretty dope. Um, but one, I thought it was, let me tell you why I thought it was dope. One, for them to document that, like, it reminds me, I know we did a story a few, uh, a few weeks ago about Kanye West, and mm -hmm. he pretty much was documenting, um, his rise to, to stardom and his rise to fame right. before he was, you know, famous, yeah. that he kind of had Grass the wherewithal roots. to, you know, say, hey, could you come follow me and document all this stuff? Because one day we're going to blow up, it's going to be big. I would not think back in 1969 that somebody would say, hey, let's document this concert series and who knows what it will be later on, later in life. I know that it stood behind, or not stood, but it, it remained behind closed doors in the vault for so many years and Questlove went and actually said, hey, let's put this together in documentary form. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just, I mean, it's to me, that part alone is mind blowing that they documented this whole event the way that they did so that way he can put this together so many years later actually it wasn't mind-blowing to me and here's why okay because at the same time the other big festival was going on which was widely known and documented which was the um what, what's up or, yes oh yeah yeah it, okay i get you I, I understand what you're going i just think it was put in a vault because you know, Woodstock overshadowed what was going on and you know, that was the Harlem area, right? Yeah, it, it was it was the Harlem yeah, in New York. And but Woodstock was more widely known. Like I knew about right. what I mean but this we is had again just to me personally. Heard of Right, that's what I'm saying. So for uh, an event that I had never heard of to be documented, now you document Woodstock, I get it because everybody in their mama knows about Woodstock. But that's because and that was the, in the documentary 70s. was shared and I'm pretty sure it got you know major media pub at that time as well. Right, so to have a, you know, what I would have thought, you know, or I would say is a little known, you know, um, music celebration or music concert series, you know, for, you know, however long, I think a weekend or so that it went on, you know, I'm like, okay, for somebody to say, hey, take out a camera, let's document this. And then to, you know, and, you know, I just think that to me, it's just, it's just gotcha. not as common as I would have had expected it to be. Had it been a bigger main, you know, a bigger uh, concert series or whatnot and so forth, then I'd have been like, okay, or, or a part of, like, you know, they had the whole Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, this is a part of the Harlem Renaissance. Let's document this. Gotcha. Then I'm, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I would have expected it to be documented. Or I would have expected it to be more widely known. But I had never heard of this this festival until, you know, just recently watching this particular series that Questlove put together. And I, I definitely give a shout out to Questlove. Um, one, I'm a big fan of The Roots, period. Yeah. Um, as I know, he's you know they're the uh, house band for Jimmy Fallon. But uh, just in general, uh, being out of uh, Philly and so forth. And so it's for him to go and dig into. And one, just his love for music and mm -hmm. all the... You don't even understand how much Quest Love has had his hand in all types of music. Not just, you know, soul, not just R&B. But he's had his hand in, you know, rock and... You name it, he's had his hand in it. So for him to go and actually go ahead and do something like that, I think that's definitely just super dope that he was able to, you know, put that together and, and actually win an Oscar, which even takes it even further. So because he didn't get his just due the other night, um, we definitely want to, you know, acknowledge the fact that, you know, he did this um, and to keep it moving, you know, to, to keep supporting him in, in what he's doing. And I'd say that for those who have not checked out Summer of Soul, please do so. It It's a wonderful treat. We thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of RETV Newsbreak. Be sure to subscribe to the RETV YouTube channel and, and Facebook pages for more great news and shows. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here on RETV. Don't forget, also, you can download the RETV channel on Roku. Until then, be, be blessed, blessed and, and be, be great. great.
Hey, it's your girl, Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there. Welcome to What's Going On? My name is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics. And sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not-so-warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On? Growing up in the church, we saw a lot. Things that people refused to talk about. The elephants in the room. Mental illness, sexual abuse, broken family, domestic violence, and so much more. The Big E, The Elephant in the Room is a show that sheds light on these topics. We're here to speak about the unspeakable.